Let me play this. ...of all kinds here in the United States, whether the United States deploys a digital dollar or not, because 130 countries around the world are currently exploring central bank digital currency or CBDC. Well, have, uh, 130 countries are exploring CBDCs. What do you think is going to happen with this technology? You think this technology is going away? They're going to put it. They're going to put it in a closet, and and they're like, you know what? That crypto, man, it was cheap. It was fast. It was effective. It was easy to use. We replaced basically a bunch of different people that we didn't need anymore to verify transactions. We can save 60, 80, 90 percent sending money. Do you think they're going to put that technology back in the closet and 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 not 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 use it? Fuck no, they're going to use it. Like Nicaragua has already done it, has it? Has it not? Well, put, let's put aside small economies. China has already done it, and they okay. already have it in 260 million Chinese citizens' wallets. The European okay. The reason China has so many citizens is is if you work for the Chinese government in any way, shape, or form. If you're a teacher, if you uh, you know fix drains, whatever the job is, you get paid in the digital yuan. Okay, and they're also working on a digital renminbi. But it's the digital you want. That's why they have so many people on that. And, and China is actually kind of at the forefront of, of leading this revolution. That's why Japan is racing to get their CBDC out because Japan and China have their thing going, right? They're, they're, and Union they has moved from exploration to now development of a digital euro, and they expect to have it in place in the next two or three years. So C the but point I'm making- Where it's CB been deployed, does it work? What's the experience? China's works. It's yeah. actually quite sophisticated. It's quite powerful. And in a matter of time, China will not only use it for domestic use, but will export it around the world. There you go. As an export product. You can imagine in, say, 10 years, a digital boulevard, which is basically a white label version of China's digital yuan. It'll have interoperability with China's digital yuan for payments for, say, building up port facilities or water treatment facilities. But it'll be white labeled as a digital boulevard. You know, Chris, I think one of the sort of backlashes that comes up really quickly, we, we just hit 103 people watching live. If we get two more people watching live, we'll break a record here live on, on the stream. 106. We just broke the record. I love you all. Thank you so much, man. You guys are incredible. It has been a truly an honor to to grow with you these past few years here on YouTube. And thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart up when this topic comes up is that the government will be able to sort of track exactly what you do with your money and i feel like especially in the u.s uh you know people love their privacy uh politics uh, privacy is a big issue how big of a stumbling block is that issue do you think so mike first of all it's a very legitimate concern yeah. it's a, it's a, you know those those representatives like tom tom emmer in congress and DeSantis that have talked about this they're not wrong to be concerned about this because the benchmark thus far is China's digital yuan, which is designed for full surveillance of the population. And if that model were to be the basis for a digital currency here in the United States, it would be a disaster. It would violate the Fourth Amendment of the Constitution, amongst other things, but it would be a disaster. But let, Wait, let, let really quickly, really quick, let's talk about this. So, yes, the Chinese, the China model is to kind of track what citizens are buying. The U.S. model, the stuff that they tested here in the U.S., you, you, the, you, the regular person, are never going to have a direct account with the Federal Reserve. You're going to have a bank account with your bank. Your bank has the account with the Federal Reserve, okay? So the, the, if you're not doing anything wrong and you're using a central bank digital currency, it'll just be like using currency. I'm not out here trying to fan, but there is a lot of, uh, there's a lot of negativity and, and uh, uh, you know, a, a politicians use fear. Like if you watch some of these news organizations, it's all about fear, right? It's all about the border. It's all about, you know, immigration and then people are coming for your jobs and, and CBDCs, we're going to track all your stuff, right? It's, it's fear sells people and pushes people to do things, right? A CBDC is, is going to be a digital representation of the money. It is coming no matter what anybody says or does. They can tell you that they hate it, but one day the U.S. is not going to be able to keep printing money like they are right now. And they're going to have to figure out a way to, to, to get out of the situation. And they're going to probably figure out a way to do it with crypto. 
right? And and I think there's there could be a deal to be done there with XRP, and 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 maybe Ripple gives the X, the U.S. government a portion of 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 the wallet, and then that's what they decided to use for the CBDC. I mean, imagine what a ten thousand dollar XRP price would do if the U.S. had you know five billion XRP, right? They they could take care of the national debt. We wouldn't have any more problems. So I don't know. I think there I think there's something to be said and something to be done there. But let's keep finishing. Let's keep listening to this. Let's put that in context for a second. So can a stable coin, okay? So can any type of centralized system of value is going to be a honeypot for massive amount of da uh, data. Yeah. So whether the government does it directly with a digital currency or does it indirectly by pressuring stable coin operators to suck out all the data and hand it over to the government as, we've, as they've done with social media platforms. Right. Um, the concern about privacy is the key concern. That's why we formed the Digital Dollar Project to really encourage the United States to lead with its values. The, the United States doesn't need to focus on whether or not to deploy a digital dollar right now, but it must take a leadership t a seat at the table that is today deciding what these digital networks of value, both sovereign and non-sovereign, are going to look like because our economic competitors like Europe and our economic adversaries like China are at the table right yep. now. And in China's case, they, do, they want to ensure a digital future of money that is safe for surveillance and safe for censorship. We need to assure a digital future that's safe for democracy. Right. right. Does the central bank yep. surrender anything in terms of monetary policy by going down this path? Uh, designed right, they could actually obtain much more efficient tools of monetary policy. So take the COVID disaster, for example. What did our government do? It tried to issue paper checks to people because it had no digital means of distributing. Many people who were locked up at home couldn't get to a bank or didn't have bank accounts. But with digital money, you could load it right onto their mobile device and do something that you can't do with cash, engage in online commerce. So a digital currency could actually be a great tool if we can get the other issues like privacy, like financial inclusion, like interoperability, and like resilience to penetration 